This is a Tika Model 65, a Turnbolt. We're all familiar with Turnbolt rifles. I'll work through the action just in case you need a refresher course. Very simple operation. <coughs> Closed and locked. Um, they've served well through all kinds of wars and all kinds of other situations. Tika makes, used to make the 65 and they made a short action called the 55. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about bolt actions that don't open like this. This motion takes time. And while some really good shooters can accomplish this mo motion quickly, a lot of people have trouble with this motion, especially under pressure. And in Europe and in other places in the world where wild boar hunting and other types of hunting are popular, they feel that they're missing game because they have to accomplish these motions. So, what have they done? I'll set this aside slowly. <clears throat> They've switched to a straight pull motion where you don't have to move the bolt up. They simply pull the bolt back and we've, we've, we've reviewed these before, these types of actions. I think we covered the R8, I think we covered the R93, made by Blazer. These are really compelling actions and I've looked at them for a long time. I felt badly in one of my last videos because the audience, you, could see what I was doing but I, I didn't show you how these actions locked and a lot of people wonder and have asked me how do they actually lock. Now I've removed the barrel which takes five, well 30 seconds, it sits like this. I hope my hands are in the right position, actually it sits a little further back. And Blazer gives you this cute tool to accomplish the removal of the barrel. And you can switch uh, different calibers so long as the bolt head is the same size for the given cartridge. And you probably know all about that stuff. I think the viewers are pretty educated with guns. Anyway, <clears throat> my point is when you pull, the, pull this handle back, you are actually um, moving what amounts to a bunch of pedals for lack of a better word. Those pedals are fit into the back of the chamber of the barrel. You won't see these things but if you go to your gun store and look at it you'll figure it out. They fold in, when they fold in the bolt can move backwards very quickly. <clears throat> so the R8 and the R93 which is this odd looking yellow gun, now this is not the sporting version of the R93, this is a target version which we don't need to go into on this video. Anyway, very compelling actions. Um, a lot of people were wondering, you know, how strong is this with these pedals moving in and out because there's no turning of a bolt. There's no, there's no visible locking when you close this action. You just have to trust that they're locked and they are. And I can't remember what the Blazer technicians tested these actions out at, but they've been around for probably no, well, I guess the R93 came out, I'm guessing, in 93. Could be wrong, you could check on that. Anyway, they've been out a long time, and they can take um, any pressure that you can throw at them, I think, that's safe to say. So, without going into the intricate details, when you lock this thing, it is locked and it's ready to go. You fire, you reload, it's that quick. Um, very cool. Some people love them. I think they're one of the most popular guns in Europe. This, as you may remember from my last video, is the R8, which came after the R93, this one. And it has the removable magazine, which removes the trigger, which is kind of cool. And some people said, well, I don't really want to take my trigger out when I take the magazine out. But, I mean, on the other hand, it's a great safety feature with this out at home, which is probably where most guns sleep uh, most of the time, it's pretty safe. Nobody's going to have an accident with, each, with these. Anyway, you pop it back in and you're good to go. So it's kind of a review of the R8 and, um, and I've got this R93 on the table so that you can look at the earlier model of the R8 and the R93 did not have this feature, did not have the removable magazine. And I'm just going to set down the R8 and put it down here. And the R93 
this, I'm going to contradict myself, this model actually does have a removable magazine and it is an R93, but that's not the version that you'll commonly come across. This is a competitive version of the R93, which has a removable magazine, pops in and out, but the trigger does not come off as the R8 did. This model locks very similarly to the R8. The only thing I've noticed is that the engineers increased the bearing surface of these arms or pedals. And I looked through the literature to have a better word for you to describe what these locking arms are called technically. And actually I could not find a consistent name for these locking arms because they're so unique. Blazer came up with this idea as far as I know. Although who knows, maybe there was somebody else in history, it doesn't matter. This is the first commercial application of this type of locking system. But you'll notice that as I move this bolt forward, it's locked. The pedals are now expanded. When the pressure of the cartridge is pushing back, those pedals cannot yield unless you sheared off all of them. And I, I actually don't know how you would accomplish that. The pressures would be astronomical. So I, I guess, you know, things go wrong with all kinds of guns. Uh, but this is a safe gun. But you can see, you close the bolt and that is it. This is not sealed. It's like any other bolt action. It's open and, and once, you have to trust that this thing stays locked and it does. So we've looked at the Blazer R8, Blazer R93 now. This is the CISM, which has a removable magazine. You won't find this in your local gun shop. In fact, I think the R93 is discontinued and the CISM is probably discontinued with it. This is sort of a sniper version, which I happen to buy. So I'm gonna set these down, but my point was, these are that unique Blazer locking system. Now I'm gonna put this down and pick up a totally different concept. This, I, I haven't owned this gun long. I bought this maybe two months ago. I've been trying to buy one for maybe a couple of years. Uh, but they're not very common where I am and anyway here it is so very cool now You know, I don't know how well things film, but watch this you move the bolt forward and the bolt moves Disproportionately to the movement of the bolt handle as a consequence Excuse me this bolt action rifle opens and closes and reloads faster well, faster than anything on this table and faster than anything I've come across for this configuration. <clears throat> the Merkel Helix is the fastest. I don't dispute that if you were shooting a pump action, Remington 760 or something like that, you'd be quicker, but that's an entirely different concept in operation. For a bolt action where your hand, your right hand, if you're right-handed and you're shooting a right-handed gun, um, this is quick and it has the removable magazine um, it handles like a conventional rifle uh, I, I, it's actually fantastic because it's it's unremarkable it does not utilize an unusual locking mechanism and at all times the shooter is safe from gas suppose your cartridge ruptures and 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 boom something goes wrong nothing to do with the rifle those gases can't get to your face, um, which they can in a regular turn bolt. But we don't not buy regular turn bolts because of that um, integral weakness in their design. We just go ahead and buy them, assume our cartridges won't fail. Now, a hundred years ago, a lot of cartridges failed. Brass was not as perfected as it is now. Anyway, I don't wanna bore you with those details, but Merkel Helix, as far as I can tell, um, fantastic rifle. I don't work for Merkel and I just have this one Helix in 308. Uh, by the way, this thing is in 6.5 by 55. That's the yellow rifle. And this barrel, I don't know why I'm saying this, but people write me about all kinds of stuff. It's a 243, but it doesn't have to be. The R8 uh, can be in virtually any caliber you want because you can switch the barrel and you can switch the bolt head. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons it's popular. You don't have to have a whole closet full of guns. You can have a whole closet full of one gun with a whole bunch of barrels and, and uh, two or three bolt heads. 
Uh, same goes for this helix. This thing comes apart. Um, I'm not going to try to take it apart now, because, but it's very smooth, very easy, takes no time. But somehow, if you try to do this on film, it's fumbly and it's not as nice as it should be. Uh, but you can go to your gun shop or maybe you know somebody that owns a Merkle Helix and you'll see. This is one slick mechanism. And I like this disproportionate movement. This cam um, multiplier of motion makes sense. In fact, when I was studying this, if that's what you want to call it, it would be great to actually modify this action into a pump action. Instead of having this motion, which means my right hand has to leave the trigger, um, I, it, this could easily be modified to a pump action, which would be lightning fast. Uh, maybe the Merkel engineers want to think about that. I don't know. But it could be that there's something in German law or law somewhere in Europe that says it has to be this hand. I have no idea. Anyway, uh, Merkel, you've done an astounding job. Um, it's it, Everything is simple. I mean, you, you're all familiar with this stuff. Uh, it's about as easy to operate as a gun can be. It's got a Picatinny, whatever, mounts on the top. You know these things. So... Merkel Helix, um, excellent. Um, I would give it like A++++. So we'll set aside the Merkel. And now we'll pick up this Heim. I think it's a 270. I got studio lighting in here. It's an SR30, it's in 270. Uh, here's a gun you will not encounter very often. I bought it like probably five, six years ago. Took it to the range, it kind of shoots to one hole, but then a lot of these guns do. I'd have to give this particular rifle and this particular mechanism, um, like the highest marks uh, for engineering what I would call just brilliance, like unique. You're going to wonder what I'm talking about because the, the R8 and the R93 are kind of stellar with this you know, concept of flaring pedals or whatever it is that you whatever you want to call it that, that contains that pressure but the um the sr30 actually believe it or not i don't know whether you can make this out but it locks with ball bearings so that as you push this this is a straight pull this is a show about straight pulls this action is so compelling um it's it's just an engineering like tour de force you, you close this action and ball bearings have now even though you can't see them they've expanded inside this action and they make it impossible for the pressure to come backwards <clears throat> now this action is sleek it's not as sealed as the merkel helix you may remember i showed you that one and we'll try to get some cuts after i finish talking you know on the actions up close but this is one to use modern speak cool action you, you simply open this, pull it back, push forward. There are no lugs, there are no pedals. There's nothing complicated about this. The trick was how to get ball bearings to engage recesses inside of the front receiver ring. Now, if you want brilliant engineering, probably the best idea is to go to Germany and that's where actually every gun I've talked about is from. That isn't to take away from Japan or any other country. I'm not interested in doing that kind of stuff, but these are all German guns. And this SR30 is spectacular. So I'll just run through the operation. These, I won't bore you with, regular removable magazine. Push the bolt forward. It's, it's locked, it's ready to fire. Boom, reload, boom, again. So simple. Now, you're hunting and you decide you don't wanna be cocked, all you have to do move the bolt back did you see that motion that i made right there i don't know if you can make that out that decocks the action so if you want to shoot and fire it's like that and if you don't want to move this back and this is kind of cute um i like set triggers you probably know what that means that means you don't have to use much force to fire the gun so you close and lock and then if you decide you have a distant target just push, I'll use my other hand so you can see better. Just push the trigger forward, that little bit. And then when you touch the trigger, the gun fires. Now I use my left hand so it looked like I had to use a lot of force. That probably took half a pound of effort. 
if I cocked it regularly, sorry, I'll uh, use this hand again, probably four pounds. And on a target that's 500 yards or 500 meters distant, that's a significant difference because the set trigger will prevent you from disturbing your point of aim. You just touch that trigger. Anyway, you don't need a speech about set triggers. Anyways, Heim SR30, they may be discontinued. I don't know, have a look at this thing. Flawless machining, they have to get all the tolerances perfect or it's not gonna work um, because of this ball bearing locking system. I read something on uh, one of the websites, I can't remember which one, where they did some destructive testing because people looked at this and they said, well, this is gonna blow up, which they said about the Blazer R93 and the R8. <clears throat> the destructive testing, I think, stopped at 100,000 pounds per square inch, which is way past anything that you're gonna shoot. The Weatherbees, well, they don't operate at 100,000 pounds per square inch. So uh, this thing will hold. Those ball bearings, and I could go into the details of the physics, but I won't bore you. They will hold. So there, there we go. And it's kind of a gun you won't come across. If you do come across one, I think you should buy it and stick it in the closet because this is, uh, nobody really appreciates these guns. You know, because mostly we take guns and we shoot them. And we, um, we don't necessarily come across this one but it's worth owning and, and just storing. So I'll set this one down. Now this one, this is a really great rifle. This is a straight pull bolt. See, uh, the release is down here by the trigger guard. Sorry, my hand kind of blocks everything. And um, when you look at this, this is a Browning Acera, A-C-E-R-A. And I know you can all figure that out. Um, so this is a different kind of pedigree from from these other guns um all this is is a browning automatic rifle a bar it's a fantastic piece of engineering there is no gas system they took the gas system off they got rid of the return spring because if we're not using gas to move the bolt back we don't you need a spring to push the bolt forward we are going to take all that away and we're going to turn this into a straight pull bolt action and I'll even hold it up because it's such a pretty gun I think or so people say and I mean it's slick uh, shoots to one hole I'm not exaggerating this gun shoots so well sadly discontinued you can't buy them they have another version now which has a return spring no gas system this one has no gas system no return spring the new version, I think it's called the Morale, um, has a system where you pull it back and then a return spring pushes the bolt back to battery. Have a look on the web, you'll see. Um, the bolt is further back. The reason they did that is simple. A lot of people didn't buy the Acera because I'm gonna put this to, into, into shooting position. So you can see my hand is pretty far from that bolt. So let's say um, the, the, these guns are all, you know, unloaded. Boom, I have to reach forward. Now, I'm wearing this jacket, not a big deal. I can reach that bolt handle and reload. It's a bit of a reach, but I can do it. But some people didn't like this. So Browning discontinued this model, which I actually like more than the new one. And they introduced one where you just um, pull this back and the gun itself has the return spring a la Browning automatic rifle this goes back on its own now I've seen some videos comparing the morale I hope I have the pronunciation right I don't know don't want to offend anybody um, and it's quick because you're just you're just pulling back and it goes back on its own you don't have to make that last motion this the gun does it for you uh, very very cool gun would I buy one for sure they're not available where I am but I guess they will be um, so I think that's about it I probably should show you that this is a typical turn bolt the the, the Browning Acera just turns and locks the motion that you're all familiar with 
Antiquas, Model 98s, all of them, Remington 700s, instead of you raising the balls and moving it back, turning these locking lugs out of battery, the action is accomplishing that on its own, uh, which is, I think, interesting. Obviously, these manufacturers think so. <clears throat> so um, that's how the locking is accomplished. They turn, and I'm just going to place this one down. And this one, getting this is from Helix. Same thing. Probably can't see it too well, but it, it's just locking lugs that turn into mortises. Very simple. And we all know that that is foolproof. Those will never open when you fire the gun which is the whole idea. It's a millisecond that that peak pressure is reached, but for that millisecond, your life hangs in the balance. So these turn bolts, they work. The Heim uses ball bearings. The Blazers R8 or R8 and R93, they use that pedal system. And I think that is probably it. So you, you have a good idea now. There are other straight pulls that I actually own, and I can probably make a video about that, but I thought I'd show you these ones because they're so compelling. So that's it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.